Hi, I'm Mark from Gratuitous Sets, and I've got something really cool to show you today, and this is not something that comes up that often. Um, we're going to do an entirely different type of mold that we actually try to avoid because it's a big pain in the butt, but, uh, but there are certain circumstances where this really, uh, really pays off. And um, what we have is uh, a series of tokens that are uh, a quarter of an inch thick and two inches across, and I want to make these look like metal, so we're going to do it in cold casting, but there's a problem. And so uh, what we're looking at is uh, this, this token is, uh, it's, well, it's a short cylinder, but it's going to need a roll. It's also milled on both sides. So there's Harry Houdini HH on one side. You, you can guess that this is a Houdini build. And, uh, and there is a clue on the other side. And these tokens will need to be placed into a coin return or a coin mechanism and so this token needs to roll down a ramp and be red um, and so it needs to roll properly uh, also in case you get it wrong the, the coins will come back out of the device uh, if they are uh, if, they, if, if you're not using them correctly so that you, you don't just end the game right there so that being said this needs to roll and it needs to capture detail on both sides well that's a series of problems uh, and there's really only one way that I know of to, to solve this. We're constantly coming up with, with new stuff, but for right now, there's, <laughs> there's one way that I know to solve this problem, and uh, it's to make an injection mold. So uh, what we need to do is create a, a two-part mold with an injector head on the bottom and, uh, and there's some really cool tricks that we have to make that injection mold work properly. Um, normally the molds that you've seen us do are open molds in some way. It could be a two-part mold or a one-part mold, but in both cases you just pour resin through the top and you kind of bang at it and stuff like that and you fill it up. In this case, we need to inject it from the bottom and fill it from the bottom up, purging air. So there'll be an air vent in the top and an injector head in the bottom. Uh, so that we can capture all this detail. We'll have a tiny sprue at the top and bottom in the end, and that'll just be shaved off, and, uh, and we'll get our, our perfect little coin. Um, this, I will tell you right now, that just to make this series of nine coins is going to be a four-day process. Um, it's, not, it's not simple, but it's intriguing and, and just, when you see, this is pretty cool. Um, so... Um, uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our injector sprue. Uh, what's a sprue? Uh, a sprue is the, um, uh, is when, uh, if, you, if you remember when you were a kid, well, I'm not sure, but uh, it, when I was a kid, um, I used to put plastic models together and all the parts come on that little, uh, that little tree, it's called a tree, um, and they're connected by all the sprues. Those sprues are channels for the, for the, the molding material to travel to get to all the parts. Um, that is something that is constructed beforehand in order to enable that process to happen. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're gonna be injecting our resin with, uh, this is a 60cc catheter syringe. Uh, I say that specifically because it's got a wider head than a, or than a regular injection syringe, uh, and it's also tapered, and uh, all those things are gonna play to our advantages. So, uh, um, so we're going to start out with this 60cc syringe, and we're going to uh, we're going to make our injector sprues, and then all that stuff is going to be assembled into molds later on. I probably talked too much just now, but we'll just deal with it. What I've got here is a uh, smooth on 325. This is uh, a urethane resin. Uh, it's clear. It kind of doesn't matter what resin you use, I, as long as it's a urethane resin and a hard one. I would say uh, 300, 300Q, 325. I think 326 would all be fine. Um, this is just a, a, a molding cavity is what we're going to make. So, um, so I've got my two resin parts. I'm going to mix these together and try and show you that on camera because it's cooler that way. Um, and uh, mix this guy up. And I'm on camera two now. And then here's a little technique thing that I'm going to do that I'm going to show you. I'm going to take my, my syringe and I'm going to fill it to about five cc's, maybe a tiny bit more than that. I've got plenty of resin for that. And then I'm going to show you how to back it up and then push the air bubble back out. Um, so fully depressed, I stick my nozzle in there, pull out a few cc's, 
check and see if it's about what I want. Now, here's the trick that I wanna show you. I'm, I've got bubble in here and sometimes the bubble can get, there's bubbles that get captured in here. What I wanna do is pull it back first so you can see the line in here. Tap it out a little bit, make sure, that, and then I'm gonna push it back up till it's just shy of coming out the end. And then I'm gonna stand it up like this on my table. So that's one down. I'll get the other two really quickly because this stuff cures quickly. So there's that bubble and then pull it back, push it back forward, right about to the end and then set it aside. This stuff needs to cure completely before you demold it. There's no release agent in this syringe, uh, which is fine. It's a really smooth wall and the resin does not bind to it well. It's a little too much. Pour a little bit back, back it off, set it, and there we go. So uh, patience is key here. This stuff actually, oh, and I've got my scrap mold here so I can just pour this stuff off. Um, okay, we're gonna demold these guys. They're all done. And I'm, I'm doing nine total. So I'm doing several iterations of them because we have nine molds to make. Um, I pull this guy back and it may or may not release from the tip. Uh, this, in this case, they are releasing from the tip, but they won't release from the entire syringe. Uh, there's, a, there's a neck at the, at the back of the syringe in, uh, in this area here, and, uh, and it won't go beyond that point. So what, what you do is, I got my handy air nozzle here, and I will poke it in this end and I will, I'll put my hand over, uh, over the, 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 uh, the, the plunger end and I'll just shoot a little bit of air into it. Now it will hit your hand and it'll sting a little bit. You can wear a glove if you want to. I'm telling you this so that if you do this, it doesn't surprise you and you drop everything. <laughs> yeah, man. There it is. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna do this again and uh, you can watch it, watch my face. It, 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 uh, it's a pretty good little air hammer to your hand, um, but it is not dangerous. Don't point it at anything and shoot it because that would be actually dangerous. Um, but we will pop each one of these guys out. Here, I'll do this like this for you. You can see the recoil in my hand. <laughs> so my goal in doing this is I am making a casting of the inside of the nozzle. And so when I use this as my sprue and I go to use one of these syringes to inject the, the resin in, what I'll have is the wall thickness of tension, pressure, friction holding down on the nozzle. Uh, so I'll know that I'll get a good seal. If I simply just drill the hole in it, then I'm only getting, if it was a cylinder, just a hole, then it's only the, 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 the narrowest part or the widest part of this touching that cylinder that would actually make a seal. And that's not good enough. Um, because you'd, you'd blow out the resin, it would just get all over your hand and that wouldn't work. So this taper uh, and being able to match that taper and, but, but stepping it down a tiny bit is what gives us a, a good pressure worthy injection head. Now comes the cool part. I've got, uh, I've got my little injection heads made. I've cut these little bases. Our, uh, our coins are gonna fit on those and then I will construct my, my uh, uh, all the sprue components and the mold have keys and all that kind of stuff. And you get to see that pretty much in time lapse. And, um, and so the construction of the actual molds begin. Um, these are covered in, uh, in a dissolved wax. You've seen us use that before with silicone molds. This mold will be made in silicone. This is made in Sintra. And uh, to, do the, to do the milling on both sides, we had to uh, get a sheet of material and we cut it in one side and then flip it over and cut it in the other side. Now, the reason that I'm showing you this one is because of course this one screwed up trying to measure from one side, hit a point and then go from the opposite side with the CNC machine is not the easiest thing in the world. So, you know, doing a flip uh, mill is not the easiest thing in the world. So this side is about, uh, about a 32nd inch off registration. It might even be visible to camera. Um, but so that's not good enough. And we're going to, so we did it again. Uh, but that means I have this thing to show you. Sintra, by the way, which is what this is, is PVC and it's slightly aerated. So the edge has air bubble or tiny little air holes in it that has been dressed out with, uh, with sanding 
and this dissolved wax, so I do have a smooth edge. And, uh, and it is round so that it will roll. That is incredibly important for what we're trying to do here. So Matt's standing weirdly behind me, but uh, all of these are, are uh, uh, the, the claying has been done. I've done this in an octagon so that it actually makes part of a key. And then Matt is walling them off and, let me see, and uh, he's actually putting acorn nuts for registration in the <laughs> All right, so let's just stop really quickly. I screwed that up. What I did was I, uh, I only captured detail on the surface and figured I could take care of my injection head and everything else in the second, uh, in the, the, the second part of the mold, second half. Um, the reason that didn't work is that, um, is that here is my, here's my mold, the screw up, and there's nothing to really hold this in except for the surface detail of the coin, and that's really not enough. Um, when I start pouring silicone in there, and there would be an injection head attached to the coin, and there's really no way for me to attach that to the silicone because nothing sticks to silicone. Um, so uh, let's just talk about how we do it correctly now that I've figured out my screw up on this one. It, it's different every time. So you're, you're reinventing the wheel every time and it's one of the reasons why this is so difficult. So instead of doing it this way, what I did was, here's a, here's a still of, of the actual apparatus that I set up. And everything that you see above this image, above uh, this, uh, the little clay tabs grabbing the side of the coin, above uh, and then above and around the evacuation hole and the injection hole, all that air that you see above that is, uh, is silicone. Um, so this is how it comes out after you don't screw it up. And uh, you can see I've got my surface detail. I've also got most of the edge so that that can hold the coin in. And here is my injection hole. It's uh, the still the little resin plug is still in there, the little resin taper that we made. And, uh, and that is the exhaust hole or part of it. The rest of that exhaust hole is actually captured within this first half of the mold. And the same thing is true for the injection head. So that is a clean little, little guy right there. And then what I need to do is build a, a box around this so that I can rewall it and pour the second half. I'll have to, re, re, I'll have to put this coin back in. I used two little tabs of, of clay to hold that down on the base. So that'll have to get scraped and cleaned away. Um, and then I'll pour the, the, the second half of this guy. Now the second half is gonna be simple, but what I need to do is make a wall around this that doesn't squoosh the box. If you put pressure on it, it will fatten and deform itself. And I need to keep the dimensions exactly perfect. So I'm gonna build a box that just barely puts a tiny bit of pressure on the side, like a couple of ounces of pressure at most. Um, and, uh, and that's uh, what we're gonna look at real quick next. And it's time-lapse, so yay, it's easy. Oh, by the way, um, this, is, this is what the, uh, the actual box looks like after I, uh, after I did the first half. So that's my, my back, I'll pop the sides off right now, and I will emerge with something that looks like this. Now this one, I popped the coin out to show you what it looks like, but then I gotta refit it onto the, the surface detail here, and that's a bit of a pain. So don't do that, there's no reason to. Leave the coin in place, build your box walls around it, and then re-pour your second half. These have been sprayed with mold release, and uh, something that's incredibly important to remember. Each one of these is hand keyed, which means each two mold halves, even though one of them will all, basically this backside, they just have HH on every one of them. If you get the wrong, if you, if you split the two molds apart, the two mold halves apart, and then put the wrong halves back together again, you've screwed yourself. They won't, uh, every one is, is individual and distinct as a set. It needs to stay that way, so mark your molds. Sides and bottom of the container. Oh, no, 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 no. That was a one-handed installation of an air gun and, uh, or actually, a, well, yeah, one hand, I used my chin. I put the nail gun up against my chin and shoved the, the, the air hose on. Really wish I had gotten that on camera. <laughs>
Ah, okay. All right. So uh, it is Sunday. I've been working over the weekend to fix my screw up. So I'm going to come back. Uh, I'll come back tomorrow and uh, hopefully we'll be in a position to, to pour some of these guys. Uh, <laughs> Matt came in this morning and gave me a call before I got here saying, these things aren't coming apart. And that scared the crap out of me. But here's the trick. Uh, I pulled the little injector head out, just popped it out the side and then take our compressed air and jam it in the, the injector hole and you can hear this. There it is. And uh, it releases. So, boom. Yay. Uh, this is demolded and, uh, and that's what our mold looks like. So, in, yeah, injection hole that you can see there, and, uh, and the evacuation hole is up there. So these have been uh, sprayed with mold release. This is not universal mold release. Um, and uh, I will take our dirty brush, which is this guy, and dust him liberally with, uh, with aluminum powder. That's for the inside. Uh, I can shake some of this onto there, do this guy as well. And then because we pre-baked the cake, um, we'll uh, dump out whatever is not, whatever doesn't stick in those. Uh, and then this is our prepared mold box. This is ready for, uh, I've just got some rubber bands on this. And the reason why I'm using something that's so weak is that again, I don't want to put any pressure on this mold. Um, so this is just, just giving it a tiny bit of pressure to keep the two halves and uh, try and minimize the flash, but there's gonna be flash. Um, uh, Anna, our fantastic new assistant, is going to uh, is gonna make some resin. Oh, and um, I have, um, uh, oh, we've got uh, aluminum pigment in there, just silver pigment in the part B. I made that up, it's part B. And uh, I have cut down the nozzle on our uh, syringe. <clears throat> And the reason for that is that when I poke this thing in here this way, I don't want this, the nozzle, again, we have matched that taper and I can stick it in there and get a nice seal. What I don't want is I don't want my nozzle inside my token or the to where the token space will be. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just pull up, I don't know, 15 cc's or so of, uh, of resin once that gets mixed, which is mixed. Oh, which she's going to mix it now I'm and we'll, now. we'll do that and look, wow, it's going to be done momentarily. All right, so I'm going to pull, I don't know, 15 cc's or so with that guy. Again, I'm going to pull it back, but the air bubble kind of, so the air bubble's not trapped in the throat, in the, and then Beating this part up. There we go. I'll do the bottom. I'm going to watch the top for resin to appear. There we go. Holding my finger over the edge, flip it back over onto this camera. And I'm going to inject and pull at the same time to try not to get an air bubble in there. And then I'm gonna take my plug, enter it at an angle, again, so that I don't trap an air bubble on the end. Enter it at an angle, you can see the air bubble actually come out. And then push that guy in. Now just to be, just to be safe, I'm gonna sit here and hold this guy until I know that it's started to gel. And how do I know that? Well. Our Fantagus, Fantagus? Fantagus. I'm, not, I'm not even sure how. Uh, so Anna is pouring the remainder of the resin into the scrap mold to make sci-fi greeblies. And uh, while she's doing that, I am turning this thing over. And, uh, and when the cup starts to gel, or you know, the remainder of the cup starts to gel, she will let me know. And that tells me that I can take my fingers off the holes, which should just take a few seconds. We're going to unmold one of our finished unmold. ones. Unmold? So it's not demold anymore? <laughs> what happened to demold? You happened to demold. And all I'm doing is I'm taking the rubber bands off just to unclamp it. 
setting those aside. And then, what actually, oh, there we go. We can see it from here now. I'm just taking the little wooden sandwich pieces off and the money shot right here. Don't f it up. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. And this is what we end up with. There's a little bit of spill off here around the edges, um, but we can clean that up using a Dremel tool or something of the sort. Oh, there we go. I'll just kind of rip off these little bits. Uh, save your little injector plug yes. because we're using that as a plug. We're going to uh, use that over and over again as many times as we make this. And then this is our end product. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it. Uh, it's a, it's a long and tedious process, but th there's only there's only some way, so many ways to do this, and and well, that's the one of them. So um, uh, so when you need to do an injection mold, you need to do an injection mold. Thanks. Oh, um, YouTube has changed their uh, their uh, their algorithm, and so if you don't push the notification bell, you will never be notified. If you do push the notification bell and you don't watch the channel regularly, you won't be notified, even though you push the notification bell. So if you wanna, if you wanna keep abreast of this at all, push the notification bell, bell and try to watch a video from time to time, even if you just click on it and then click it right off, even if it's, if it's something you've already seen, um, like if you, if you watch them all the time. My point is, is that you, you will have to check and, and check your subscriptions in order to find the videos because for some reason uh, YouTube thought that was a good idea. So, yay. <laughs>